I've got one question for you. Are you ready to get your game on? The longest running off road and action motorsports radio show on the planet is coming to you live with the biggest guest in motorsports. Here is the only man on the planet who can pack this much dirt slinging and tire slaying into two hours a week. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to get your ears blown. Here is Jim Beaver and the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Good morning and welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We are lit up by Rigid Industry, schooled by Dirtfish Rally School, anywhere as possible with General Tire. And uh, like no other KMC wheels, and we can't forget our official audio partner, MTX Audio. I am here in the studio on a Monday morning, and I got to tell you, I had a weekend off, a first in a long time. Uh, great to spend some time at home, but, uh, you know, I get to spend some time at home, and that means I get to uh, partake in some uh, some great uh, racing on TV. Uh, Supercross, great stop there. Obviously, we had Lucas Oil kicking off. Um, lots, uh, lots of stuff happening in Durocross. That was in action over the weekend, and uh, that leads us to a great guest lineup today, kicking things off here in just a couple of minutes, my good friend Steve Arpin. Dropping bombs last week, literally global rallycross bombs being dropped. Uh, Ganassi Racing, Chip Ganassi, yeah, you know that Chip Ganassi. You know him from NASCAR, you know him from IndyCar. They are coming to Red Bull Global Rallycross. If it doesn't get any better, bigger than that, I mean, you know, Andretti last year, Ganassi this year. Uh, man, dropping bombs, announcing Steve Arpin, Brian Deegan as their two drivers. They're going to be running M Sport cars, similar to Kim Blocks coming over from Europe. Uh, huge announcement. We are going to have Steve Arpin in the house in just a few minutes to take us through this blockbuster GRC announcement. Um, uh, you got to be excited about that. Then we've got Ryan Beat. You know Ryan Beat, my General Tire Rigid Industries teammate. Kick, kicking it down in pro light in the Lucas Oil uh, in the Lucas Oil Off Road Series, they had their kickoff this weekend in Lake Elsinore. We're gonna have Ryan Beat calling in kickoff hour number two on the show and uh, take us through a wild roller coaster of a weekend for Mr. Ryan Beat, and then closing out the show just like every week is the girl that you absolutely love to have on air, Miss Amy Hood. She's going to be taking us through some two-wheeled shenanigans, not only Supercross, but uh, we've got a little bit of Endurocross to cover today as well. But, uh, man, a great show and uh, got a stacked full uh, Dirtfish Rally Report to kick things off. And uh, that's just what we're going to do right here is kick things off with your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. And with that, we are immediately going to roll right into Steve Arpin, who is hanging out on the line. All right, we are catching up here with Mr. Steve Arpin. Uh, how's everything going, Steve, man? Big, big announcements coming out of your camp recently. Yeah, with that being said, I'd say things are going uh, pretty, pretty good over here right now. It's uh, It's been a really exciting offseason this year. Yeah, I got, I got to tell you, you know, this is something I, I guess uh, maybe some of the GRC insiders have, have known. I got to, you, I think, accidentally a couple months ago, uh, you dropped the cat out of the bag to me and I'd heard rumors of it. But I got to give you a little crap on air just because uh, you called me Jim Beaver by mistake calling a Jim Beaver that worked at Ganassi. And uh, and you kind of let the cat out of the bag with not actually knowing which Jim Beaver you were talking to, I guess. Yeah, when I when I called you talking about finding the right trailer we need, you were probably a little bit confused, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'd heard rumors and I heard you were pegged for one of the seats, but right then I go, well, I guess this pretty much confirms it, right? So, uh, you know, that was that was a couple months ago at this point. So, you know, you sitting on your hands these past couple of months, you know, kind of on a gag order. It's been had to have been tough. Yeah, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, I've been I've been sitting on my hands since since we're at Vegas last year for the season finale. It's uh, it's been it's honestly been the hardest thing I've ever done trying to keep a secret because it's the most excited of anything that's ever happened to me in my racing career that I've been uh, to to have the opportunity to drive for a company like Chip Ganassi Racing, uh, partnered up with all the little guys from Lone Bro out in Montana. 
this is honestly it's it's honestly any driver's dream. Like just Ganassi, it's he's such an iconic name in the world of motorsports. He's involved in all of the top levels of motorsports with, with throughout the United States. And now to throw rallycross in that mix, it's it's really cool. Yeah, well, and you know, talk about you, you know, because did you ever think, you know, because you were doing, uh, I guess, nationwide at that point. I, I lose track of what they're calling these series nowadays. It seems like it changes every year or two. But uh, uh, you know, you you were doing a lot of NASCAR stuff. You know, you you jump in, uh, you know, to the GRC stuff. I mean, did you ever, when you you kind of, you know, you first got that drive in GRC, you thought, hey, I can make a career out of rallycross, or did you always think kind of stock car was was going to be where your your future was? You know, stock car, I, I always thought that's where my future was for a long time. And then after I raced my first race in the rallycross car, it's, <laughs> I remember talking to my dad, it's like, this is where I need to make my future. It, I had so much fun. It was, uh, to be honest with you, the conversation I had with my dad at that point was, this is the most fun I've had racing since we used to be racing in dirt cars just on Saturday nights with, with essentially no responsibilities. It wasn't a job. It wasn't anything like that. It was a, it was a, hobby that I got to do with my dad and racing racing rally cars it just kind of brings that that mentality back that atmosphere back you know what I mean yeah, I, I totally, you know, I totally get that. And, I, and to me, I think it's tremendous that, that you know, that what Global Rallycross has built as a product allows guys like, you know, you and, and Scott Speed, who are, who are racers by trade, I mean, you can actually make a living at this, you know, and, and uh, this be your full-time gig. Because, you know, in the past, a lot of times, series, you know, similar to Rallycross, it would be one of those things you, you go and do, you know, on a weekend here or there is, is kind of a fun side project, but you had your bread and butter. And I think it's pretty cool that, that Rallycross has got so big that this can be your bread and butter absolutely but like with red bull getting on board um colin dyan since he's taken over the helm of rally cross he's done so many big great things with the series and he knows what it takes to he, he knows that if he wants the series to grow guys need to be able to make a living doing that and be able to commit to it and at the same time providing value for sponsors so he's taken all those ingredients figured out a way to mesh them all together and now you have the likes, like you have the likes of Chip Ganeski racing in there, Andretti Motorsports, uh, Brian Hurd of Autosports coming in. You've got all the guys from OMSC and all the teams abroad that have come in. The factory involvement is huge. I think probably more than any other form of motorsports in the United States right now. So with that being said, it's, like I don't, I don't know about you, but with all that being said, I'm sitting here. It's like, well, where else do I want to be? It's like this is pretty self-explanatory. You got companies like Lowe's. I am so excited to be partnered up with Enios this year. Um, got companies like Rockstar, Red Bull, all these huge companies that are all rallying behind the sport. And for me to be able to just be a small part of that and be on board, like through the growing seasons, through the, through the, like just be with the series as it's growing. It's, uh, it's a pretty big honor. Yeah, well, and I, I think that's what's cool kind of about your story is, is you have been there and, and you've been through the growing seasons, you know, and, and I think you've grown as a driver. And, and, you know, last year in particular, I know, you know, you were one of those guys everybody had, you know, going into last year pegged as kind of a dark horse. We know Steve's going to be successful. It's kind of when's it going to happen. And, and last year definitely was your breakthrough season. I think, you know, right out of the box, you surprised a lot of people. And, and you know, talk about that and, and how, you know, you've had to, you know, you, you were able to draw on dirt track, stock car, snowmobile racing. You know, you're one of the guys that has you know been around and driven a lot of things you know and and how has that contributed to where you're at today well i think honestly just when you're talking about motorsports there i don't think there's a thing you could drive that is bad experience and any any ounce of seat time you get or whatever you want to call it racing the snowmobile you're pretty much sitting on the ice on those things but um, any ounce of experience you can get just in general is a it, it can apply somewhere it can cross over somewhere and I've been, that's one of the things that's really helped me be able to kind of cross over from, from a snowmobile to a dirt modified to a silver crown car to a truck nationwide or ARCA car and then now over to the rally cross cars and have a relatively quick learning curve. So that's definitely been something that's been, been an advantage for me. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and talk about, you know, let's talk a little bit, because I know, you know, there's been rumors of Ganassi wanting to get involved for uh, for well over a year now, you know, go, dating back to, I think, the previous off season. you know. And, uh, you know, how, how did things mature with, with Ganassi? <laughs> because obviously every driver in the paddock wants that seat that you've got, you know. It, it's uh... Being a pest. <laughs> that's how things happened there i uh i i actually had a had some dealings with them back when i was doing the nascar thing uh back with mike's hard lemonade we were trying to put a nationwide program together with them stuff never materialized but 
we uh, built some really good relationships. And we're actually at the X Games last year, and Max Jones and Steve Loletta, the president of Chip Ganassi Racing, kind of walked by, and I saw those boys there. And ever since then, it's like I've honestly probably I probably just annoyed them to the point that they like just gave me a ride to to shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, though, it's uh, it's been a it's been a work in progress. Uh, we got all the guys from Lone Bro out in Montana that were really looking to get involved in the sport in a different level. Uh, their company is growing really fast, and they really like the the way the the global rally cross was progressing, and the way their employees as a whole were just kind of rallying behind what I was doing in the sport. And so they wanted to get involved at a lot bigger of a level, and pairing them up with Ganassi and getting all those conversations going. It just kind of all the all the right pieces fell in place at the right times, and here we are today. Yeah. Well, and I know, uh, you know, th- this year, from what I understand, the cars are going to be a little bit different. Uh, obviously, you're back in a Ford. You're very familiar with the Ford platform. These ones, uh, I believe, are being uh, uh, our M-Sport cars, correct, out of, out of Europe that you guys are going to be driving. That's got to have you pretty excited. I am so excited to climb in this thing. It's actually getting put on a boat Monday morning and coming out here so i'm going to be sitting there at the port when it lands on the shore waiting for that thing it's uh it's honestly it's going to be a lot like the car that ken block was driving um it's like last year talk about the equipment i was in last year we had a you're right we started off the season strong all the way up to daytona we were in the top three in points and within striking distance of being in the lead if the other guys just had a had a bad show and then the mechanical woes started. I think five of the last six races or so, five of the last, actually, I think all five of the last five races, we were sidelined at some point throughout the weekend with mechanical problems. So it was just one of those deals where when the opportunity comes getting such a first-class piece of equipment, it's from a driving standpoint, from a driver's standpoint, it's honestly like, being a kid and it's the first time you realize that Santa Claus is coming on the on the night of the 24th of December and you're going to wake up the next morning and there's going to be a presence everywhere. That's the that's what I've been feeling for waiting for these cars to show up at the shop. Yeah, well, and, and the whole platform's got to have you, you know, the whole program's got to have you pretty excited. I mean, you know, joining Ganassi, I mean, you know, they, they have, you know, road racing programs, IndyCar programs, stock car programs. I mean, they, they literally have their foot in the door in, in every major motorsport in the United States, you know, and now Global Rallycross. I mean, that, that's got to have you pretty excited just to be joining, uh, you know, the stable of drivers, you know, that, that you're joining. Absolutely. I, I get to go to work every day, and Jamie McMurray's walking around, Kyle Larson's walking around. Uh, I was sitting there the other day, and Tony Kanan and Scott Dixon walked up and kind of welcomed me to the team and everything. So it's a it's a pretty cool pretty cool place to be. And then when when you talk about driving for Chip Ganassi, it's the the guy is just a pure blooded racer. And my opinion is he's of all the owners in the sport, he's the truest racer of all of them. He's he doesn't have all sorts of other businesses that fund fund his race program. It's like this is it. This is what he does. And with that being said, winning is first and primary and basically our only concern. We just we have to win and take care of our partners. And that just aligns with with everything I want to do in the sport, everything I want to do in my career. So it's a it's a perfect fit. Yeah. Well, and not only that, I mean, your teammate, I, I know he's not running the full series, but I believe uh, Brian's in for, for seven rounds, it sounds like. And I mean, you know, having a solid not teammate a, there. Not a bad teammate to yeah. have there, is it? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, so you're joining a guy and, and you know, with these cars being, you know, you know, the first time you've been in them, obviously it's going to be the first time Brian's been in uh, these particular M-Sport cars. I mean, you guys will be able to work together to develop them. And I think, uh, you know, definitely having a solid teammate like that with you is, is definitely going to make, you know, things move along quicker. Absolutely, and we've been we're so fortunate to get we got a guy by the name of Carl Goodman, uh, really really established engineer in the NASCAR world. But before that, he spent ten years developing these cars at M Sport over in England. So we got him leading their program. So the the experience we have going into this, um, an open mind, new way of thinking, new way of wanting to do things, and with Brian and I and all the resources over at Ganassi, it's. I honestly, I don't even know where to set my expectations because it's so, I don't know how high to set them because it's so, just going into this, all the, everything that we have at our fingertips and the opportunity that's right in front of us, it's just a matter of, like, how do we figure out how to capitalize on everything we have at our fingertips right now? 
Yeah. Well, and I, I think that's what's exciting for me, you know, is somebody that's worked with the series the past couple of years and, and going into this year. I mean, you know, I look at things and, and like you're saying, you don't know where to set your expectations. But I mean, you know, you've got Ganassi coming in who, uh, you know, everybody's, you know, is guaranteed you guys are, are going to be, you know, a solid effort. You've got Ken Block, you've got Olsbergs, you've got the Andretti group. I mean, you know, there's so many different the Subaru factory back program, which improved last year. And, and to me, it's it's pretty exciting because a couple of years ago, if you weren't in an Olsberg car, you didn't have a chance. And, and it's not saying anything bad about Andreas, but, you know, everybody else has come up to that level now. And now there's, you know, 10, 12 guys that can win on any given weekend. Absolutely. And honestly, I think you're going to see that even more so this year than than last year. Um like the Andretti guys came in last year, and they really raised the bar. They did a really, really good job at their program, and I'm hoping we're going to do the same this year. Um, I know everyone as a whole is stepping up their efforts. It's uh, you, you said it exactly perfect. Last year it was like the the guys in the in the in the front row and half of the second row. Those are your guys that have a shot at winning. I honestly think that now it's going to be nine or ten of, of of the cars on the track legitimately have a shot at winning each and every race. Yeah. Well, and I, I know with the series, too, I, I think, you know, just uh, the racing improved last year as a whole. I mean, the tracks got better. I, I think, uh, you know, the tracks being better definitely lended to, to better racing on track. We didn't see, you know, the, the red flags we've seen in the past. And I think really the series, uh, you know, it, it's got to have everybody excited going into this year because I think it's finally hit its stride. And, you know, and, and we know this is what, you know, this is what Rallycross is in the United States. Absolutely. And one thing lots of people forget and to be honest with you, I'm guilty of it too. I forgot it for a while. It is like everything that you start and every business that you start, everything that you attempt to build, you're going to have growing pains. You're going to run into hurdles. You're going to figure out, you're going to have a bigger list of things that don't work than do work. And that's the same for the series. This is a young series. It's growing and they're doing a remarkable job putting together and doing everything they can to, to make the product is, is competitive, is exciting, is, is fair, everything is, is they can possibly be. Uh, like you, you said it perfect, the quality of racing last year, they got all of us drivers. They kind of slapped our wrists a little bit about those first corners can be vicious. They can be, we can be hard on each other. And they really, they listened to us with all the feedback that we gave and trying to get a little bit more of a racier first corner so we're not all just kind of piling into a funnel. And I think this year, just listening to lots of the things they have in the works, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be insane. I think you're going to see lots of two, three, sometimes four wide racing. I think you're going to see bumping and banging, but I think it's going to be more so hard racing, bumping and banging than just flat out wrecking each other. So it's uh, I can't wait. It's going to be wild. Yeah. Well, and it's got to have you excited. I mean, you know, obviously I'm assuming the team is, uh, you know, based out of Charlotte. You're in Charlotte. It's got to have you excited being not too far from, from headquarters where, you know, literally every day you can go in and check in on the program. I'm there at 7.30, 8 o'clock every morning since, uh, since back in December. So it's – I'm I, – honestly, I think my wife – is excited for the race season to start just to kind of calm me down. <laughs> I think I'm just wearing her out, like just being this little immature little kid just jumping around. Like, I got a new race car. Are you here? So <laughs> it's, uh, I can't even, I honestly can't even put into words the thoughts that are going through my head right now. Just the combination of the opportunity of getting such a high quality piece of equipment, uh, having partners on board like Enios and all those people over there. I've got to spend some time with them over the off season and just looking looking so forward to being a part of that organization and driving for Chip Ganassi. It's like what racer wouldn't dream of driving for a man like Chip Ganassi. So yeah. it's a it's a pretty cool opportunity. Well, and I got to ask you, you know, is uh you know, knowing knowing how race car drivers are, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Jamie and Tony and and the other guys that you know that, that drive for the other uh Ganassi, uh, you know, in the other series for Ganassi, I'm sure they all want to want a chance to wheel your car, right? They're, everyone's already planning out the track in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so they're already planning out on all right well like where are we gonna do like a little test track out in the parking lot so we could try these things so but there there's been it's it's actually really cool that's another thing that's really cool and it says a lot for the sport too the series and what it's all about because once they announced it internally at chip canassi racing there's so much excitement 
throughout the their current employees. Like it was just awesome. And people were walking by before they even really knew that I was the driver and I was going to be pegged for it and stuff. I remember sitting there and hearing guys walk by. It's like, oh, I can't wait till these rally cars get here. Those things are awesome. We're going to have to go to the races. So pumped we're doing this now. So just to see that kind of excitement, kind of like eavesdropping on people, if you want to call it that, and listening to what they're saying about the series and, and how much excitement it's bringing just to the employees for being a part of this series, I think that says a lot for the series and where it's going, too. Yeah, you well, and I, I guess for them, you know, they, they've been doing the IndyCar, they've been doing, you know, the road racing, they've been doing the NASCAR thing for so long. I mean, this is a bit of the unknown and, uh, you know, and, and probably a bit of a challenge to a lot of them because it's something new. And I think, you know, anytime you infuse that into, a, you know, into a, a veteran culture, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, like, these guys already have a lot to be excited about. They've got, they've got, Two NASCAR programs, two IndyCar programs, two IMSA programs. Like they've got, they've got a lot of racing going on. So for them to be excited over something like this, and and you said it perfect. They they love the challenge, and people. We've got guys from all different departments already coming over and asking us how they can help. So when and little stuff like that. It's like these guys, are, these guys are smart people. <laughs> these NASCAR programs and IndyCar programs, they attract some incredibly intelligent people. And to have that at our resources is is a pretty neat opportunity. Yeah, for sure. So uh, you know, before we uh, before we let you go, uh, you know, obviously you got a couple of months before the opener. Uh, you know, what what, uh, what what's on tap for Steve Arp in the next couple of months? Honestly, we're building a race team from scratch, so we have got we've got so much going on. Uh, looking forward to heading out to Los Angeles for the media day. Uh, going to get some testing in. Cars are going to be here right away. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on with Enios. Uh, going to do as much preseason stuff with them as we can. They're going to be sponsoring the NASCAR race in Charlotte here the week before our opener. So we're going to do lots of cool stuff leading up to that weekend. And I've got up to – it's it's like wedding season for all – for us and our friends and everything. My wife, Jen, and I got married last year. I think we have two or three weddings before the season opener, a couple throughout the season this year. It's going to be – it's going to be a busy wedding season year for sure. When it rains, it pours, right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time uh, for a quick interview. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, big congratulations to you. I know, uh, you know, this, is, uh, this has definitely been something in the works for a while. And, and I'm excited for you just to be able to get the cat out of the bag finally. <laughs> you have no idea how much how nice it is just to be able to it's like I, I have I have scar tissue on my tongue, I think. I had to bite my tongue so many times when I almost said something. So it's uh it's pretty cool to have it out. Awesome. Well thanks a lot, Steve, and uh you know, good luck and I will see you out at Media Day. Sounds good and hopefully after the first race we're gonna do something exciting and we can get back on here and tell you all about it. Absolutely. Anytime, my friend. I appreciate it, my friend. Take care. All right, thanks, Steve. Bye bye. Bye. All right, talk about an awesome interview with uh, my good friend Steve Arpin. Uh, literally just a class act, one of one of the nicest guys in motorsports you'll meet. And, uh, you know, one of the guys always takes time out for the fans, but uh, a sponsor's dream, uh, carries himself well, um, you know, and, and just an absolute fierce competitor on course. And, uh, you know, he's been a winner at, at just about everything he's done. And I, I think... Uh, you know, the, the days are numbered until, uh, you know, he, he scratches Red Bull GRC off the list. And I, I definitely think this new relationship with uh, Chip Ganassi Racing uh, is, is, is going it to <laughs> lend itself well to, to him finally breaking through and, and getting that win. I mean, you know, he's got a lot of podiums, just never, uh, never broke through to the top of the box. But uh, I think uh, 2015 is the year for Steve Arpin. And uh, just uh you know got to got to give a big shout out to him i mean uh, you know this is a guy who who literally has worked his butt off uh to get where he's at you know and and uh, you know he he's grinded and made calls and knocked on doors and made more calls and knocked on more doors and uh you know and for him to finally land a ride with uh you know with Ganassi Racing um you know it's uh it's something special you know and and uh you know, it's it's proof that uh, you know, no matter how many times that door's uh, slammed in your face, sooner or later it may open. And uh, you know, and and you know, and, and that's not saying it was that way with Ganassi Racing, but I, I just know Steve, and uh, you know, and he's got a drive to be successful, and I think he's definitely put himself in a position in uh, in 2015 to to make a run for that championship. And uh, you know, stepping in with Ganassi Racing, I mean, M Sport Cars. Uh, talk about a great package, and I think uh, you're going to see right out of the box his team uh, is going to battle, uh, you know, Olsberg and uh, and Ken Block, and uh, you know, and and 
you know, in the Andretti cars for, for wins and, you know, and, and we can't leave Subaru out it either. I think, you know, to me, I'm just excited about the 2015 Red Bull GRC season. I mean, so many storylines going into this year, so many big things. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, like we said earlier in the show, it, it went from where you knew there was two or three drivers that could win, uh, you know, a couple years ago to now. Who who do you pick? Uh, I mean, you know, the, there's 10 guys on any given weekend that can win the race. And I think, um, you know, the, the concept, you know, I, I know, you know, GRC over the years, it's it's morphed. And, and you know, and, and I finally think they found the formula that works. And you're seeing it by the on-track racing action, the teams, the sponsors, everybody getting involved. Uh, they, they've literally set them up for uh, an explosion in 2015. And I think you're going to see that. So, uh, so definitely looking forward to the season kickoff. And uh, as we're on air, you know, Red Bull GRC also making some huge announcement themselves this morning. This is uh I, I got to tell you, man, you, we're going to start ramping up the Red Bull GRC coverage because it's, uh, you know, in the next couple of months, uh, you know, you got to remember Red Bull GRC, you know, a lot of c- series are already kind of, you know, wheels in motion, having their kickoffs and things. And, uh, you know, Red Bull GRC, they start a little bit later, you know, they start over Memorial Weekend. They've got a longer off season. Um, than a lot of series. So some of these wheels and, and things, uh, you know, get turning and people are like, well, what's GRC doing this year? Well, you know, you got to figure they still got a couple of months left. Um, you know, it's not like a uh, NASCAR that starts the 1st of February, you know, or, or an off-road or, uh, um, you know, pick, pick your poison, any series, you know. So Red Bull GRC has a little bit more time built in. But uh, that being said, making a big announcement today, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Red Bull GRC is going to be running on the streets, the streets of Red uh, of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, 30th and 31st. That's going to be the series kickoff in May, and I got to tell you, this is uh, this is pretty pretty special for them. Uh, you know, th- this isn't uh, you know where where they're running uh, you know a modified course in in say uh, you know I want to say a parking lot, but uh, you know in, in an asphalt lot that they actually build you know to their specs, like like we've seen in Vegas or in New York, or in D.C. This is literally going to be run on city streets in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, First time since, I believe, 2012 at the X Games uh, that they've done this. So, uh, you know... You know, one of the most diverse series in motorsports, getting a little more diverse. You know, we've got the asphalt. We've got, uh, you know, we've got the purpose-built uh, racetracks. We've got the city streets now. We've got the dirt tracks like you see up at Dirtfish Rally School. I mean, uh, you know, a lot goes into uh, into this series. And I think uh, it's just one more, uh, one more challenge for these drivers to win the championship, making the series just a little bit more diverse. That being said, RedBullGlobalRallyCross.com slash tickets. Tickets are on sale for Fort Lauderdale, Florida that round. And uh, I guess from what I understand, Red Bull Global Rallycross.com slash tickets will be your home for all tickets this season. So uh, definitely want to check that out. But we are in the middle of the Dirtfish Rally Report for this week. And uh, I got to tell you, um, it's, uh, it's been a great one so far. And uh, I got to throw out that Dirtfish uh, coupon code that we, uh, that we give out from time to time. My personal coupon code that's going to get you a discount off your classes up at Dirtfish Rally School. That coupon code is JBDF2015R. That is JBDF. 2015R. That will get you, I believe, 10% off up at Dirtfish. It's uh, quite a bit of money when you're booking a three-day class, so definitely plug that in. Once again, JBDF 2015R. That's going to get you a discount up at Dirtfish Rally School, and be sure to tell them Jim Beaver sent you. And um, I'm, uh, I'm kind of dialing in my class uh, for sometime this summer right now. Once I do, there's going to be some openings, so I'll put it out there to you fans when I'm actually going to be up at Dirtfish. Uh, be up there. Uh, it's going to be a, a three-day uh, trying to get prepped for uh, Terracross season this summer. Uh, you know, spend a little bit of time in an all-wheel drive uh, an all-wheel drive Subaru. It's going to help out with my all-wheel drive Polaris Razor. I'm going to be racing in Terracross. So uh, I'm going to spend three days up there. Good news for you is uh, it's uh, my three-day class that I'm going to be taking kind of as a, as a tune-up. You guys are welcome to come. You know, they, they have eight, nine seats per class. So uh, I'll put the word out when I'm going to be up there. But uh, any of you fans want to come and go to rally school with Jim Beaver, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to to jet up there. And, heck, using this coupon code, you can even get a discount at it. So uh, I'll have to let you guys know when I'm going to do that. But it'd be fun to do it with a few fans and and listeners when I do go up there. But speaking of rally news, this is the Dirtfish Rally Report. And right now, WRC Argentina, it's kicking off this week. And uh, World Rally Championship uh, 
I don't know if you can get more, much more exciting than uh, Mexico with, uh, with, uh, <laughs> with you know, we got cars, you know, sinking in lakes, pulling them out, running rallies. Uh, you know, it was great storylines coming out of Mexico, but Argentina definitely one of uh, one of the great, uh, you know, rounds on. Uh, you know, on the event, got some super, super long stages, um, 52 KMs, uh, as well as uh, 56 kilometer stages. Uh, so some super long ones, uh, one, of the, one of the most popular super specials in all of WRC at uh, Carlos Paz. Uh, that's uh, closing out Friday. That's going to be live on TV for those of you that uh, get WRC TV. But uh, don't forget, you can always sign up for WRC Plus and get that as well. But that's all kicking off uh, this weekend, or this week, I should say, uh, Rally Argentina. So you WRC fans, you're going to be plugged in, primed for WRC Plus, and we'll have all the results next week week here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. But this has been your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web, www.dirtfish.com, and um, be sure and use that coupon code JBDF2015R when booking for a discount. We are going to take a short commercial break, and when we come back, we are going to uh, talk some Lucas Oil off-road. Um, I've got some uh, Polaris Razor UTV news to throw at you. And uh, then kicking off hour number two, Ryan Beat's going to be calling in. So this is the Down and Dirty Radio Show. I'm your host, Jim Beaver. And uh, you got any questions, comments, concerns, shoot them at me. We'll get them on air at Jim Beaver 15 on Twitter. Uh, you know, I know a lot of you got uh, questions for Ryan Beat. He's a popular one. So uh, shoot them at me as well as Amy Hood. You want to talk a little Supercross, shoot those questions over as well. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. And we will be back in just a minute. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valle Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Baja, check, King of the Hammers, check, Crandon, check, the Mint 400, check, only one wheel company can say they have dominated the deserts and rocks of the Southwest to the mud and carnage of the big house at Crandon, and that company is KMC Wheels. KMC Wheels has won them all with the help of elite drivers like Travis Pastrana, Ricky Johnson, Bryce Menzies, Carl Renazetter, and Lauren Healy, who all rely on the XT Series from KMC Wheels to get them to the finish line and on top of the podium. Check out KMC Wheels and their full line of XT Series wheels at kmcwheels.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KMC Wheels. KMC Wheels, like no other. Rigid Industries is the original and number one LED light bar manufacturer in the world. Torture tested by some of the best drivers in motorsports. Rigid LED lighting products use cutting-edge technology and can stand up to the harshest conditions Mother Nature can dish out. Designed, engineered, and assembled in the United States, Rigid LED lighting is the only choice for your off-road vehicle or boat. 
Find out more information on the entire line of Rigid Industries LED lighting products at www.rigidindustries.com. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We are lit up by Rigid Industries, schooled by Dirtfish Rally School, anywhere as possible with General Tire, KMC wheels like no other, as well as our, our official audio partner, MTX Audio. And I uh, just got done with a banging interview with Steve Arpin, one of my favorite guys in the GRC paddock. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's family at GRC, uh, some of my favorite people in motorsports are in GRC, but uh, Steve Arpin, definitely a, a great personality, and uh, one is... If, when you make it, I don't want to say if you make it, when you make it out to a GRC event this year, definitely go and see Steve Arpin and uh, spend a little time with that guy because uh, he's all kinds of fun. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen Steve without a smile on his face. And I got to tell you, he's going to be glowing in 2015 with uh, that new ride with uh, Chip Ganassi Racing. But, uh, yeah, just a, a great personality. Stoked to have him on to kick off the show. And, um, Man, then we're gonna roll right into uh, to some more uh, to some more stuff. Though uh, we spend a, a wild, wild uh, weekend of racing, and right now we're gonna get into some Polaris UTV news brought to you by our good friends at Polaris Razor, uh, the title sponsor of the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. But uh, yeah, you know, first off, uh, you know, we're gonna get into full Lucas Oil results here in a little bit. But uh, uh, big news coming out of the UTV community. Uh, it was kind of a one-off, but they invited the SR1s back to the big show, back to uh, the national stage at uh, the Lucas Oil um, Off-Road Series. Now, you know, SR1s for a while kind of kind of played. Uh, the, you know, they were uh, kind of a they were a national class, but uh, you know, they, they were in the main show and, and kind of uh, one of the feeder classes, right? And that's you know, Corey Weller. She got her feet wet there, and uh, and obviously still uh, runs an SR1 today. Um, Doing that full time this year, actually taking a step back from Pro Four. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, sidetracked here, but uh, I think we need to get Miss Weller on in the next couple of weeks and kind of find out what's going on with her. But SR ones, kind of, they went to the regional level and they've thrived there. Literally, uh, the class is blown up. A lot of it in part to uh, Corey and her husband, but uh, SR one class literally blowing up in the, at the regional level. So they decided, uh, hey, it's a night race at Elsinore. We need to bring these guys back. You know, they they had some extra time, needed to fill a little time, and not that SR1s are a filler, but, uh, you know, they brought them back. Um, and, uh, I got to tell you, it was a stacked field. Great to see them back at the national level. And, um, round one, uh, went to Dustin Nelson, Corey Weller in second, Webster in third, Scott Webster, Brian McCormick, followed up by my, Matt Land. Um, and that was, uh, your Friday results, Saturday results, a uh, little bit different story, uh, but not for the first two positions. Dustin Nelson, Corey Weller, one and two. Brian McCormick, Brandon Kilgore, uh, and Ken Benson rounding out your top five. So uh, SR1's back at the big show, from what I understand. It's just a one-off. But I think it was successful enough uh, that we may see uh, we may see these guys back. Um, you know, we we may see these guys back at the big show uh, more often. You know, the, the, it, it's not confirmed and it's not going to be full time. I don't see them traveling. You know, SR ones to uh, you know all over to say uh, Utah and, and Reno and stuff like that. But I think 
You may see the SR1s, possibly at Glen Helen. Obviously, it's a night race. Could definitely happen there. Um, I think, uh, you know, obviously the Wellers, and there's a big contingent of SR1s in Arizona. So I think the Arizona rounds of Lucas, uh, you could possibly see the SR1s. I don't think, I think it was meant to be a one off. I think it was successful enough. You may see the SR1s brought back to the national stage at more rounds. So uh, that's me. Maybe a little wishful thinking on my part, but uh, I, I truly think uh, it could happen. And, uh, and, and, and God knows, man, they, they've got stacked fields, great racing. These things are so ridiculously fast. Um, but uh, I think we truly need to get Corey Weller on, and, and maybe she can uh, you know, give, us a, give us a little feel for things. But, uh, yeah, Corey taking a step back from Pro 4 this year. She says she's definitely going back, just uh, getting a little breathing room this year. She's going to be doing a lot of SR1 racing. And, uh, you know, both, I think, Arizona and, uh, and Cal- SoCal Regionals. But, uh, you know, um, you know, SR1's back at the big stage. Big news for the UTV community having a presence in, uh, uh, you know, in, in the Lucas Oil Series at the national level. Um, you know, you go to the regional level, my gosh, you know, they, they you know, all, uh, pro UTV, SR1, the, all the classes are, are blown up. And, and, you know, between the Wellers and what Polaris Razor's done, uh, they've definitely boosted the fields there. But, uh, um, yeah, I think uh, good news for the UTV community. Speaking of good news for the UTV community, uh, Camp Razors, they have been announced for 2015. Uh, two of them, an East Coast and a West Coast, and uh, they already had the one in Dubai, so I guess you missed that, those of you that wanted to fly to Dubai. Uh, to me, I would love to go, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's just a plane ticket away, I guess, and I couldn't stomach that plane ticket, but uh, uh, Dubai would have been a fun camp raiser to get to. Um, but Brimstone, Tennessee, Glamis, California, those two locations back. And i got to tell you, I talked with Ronnie Renner um, at the Mint 400. Obviously, he's a Polaris Razor athlete along with myself. And uh, you know, he was talking about Brimstone last year and said, I'd never been to that area of the country. He's like, absolutely insane. He's like, I can't wait to go back this year. And uh, I think the same goes for me, man. Brimstone, Tennessee, um, you know, looking at, at it online and, and you know, and, and the things that that it brings it's uh, it's pretty amazing and i think uh, i think that round is actually going to be kind of uh, a lead in to terra cross in charlotte and i i've looked it up cuz obviously i got to do terra cross in charlotte about a 5 hour difference uh, you got to think uh, some of the utv community going to be hitting up uh, brimstone tennessee september 18th and 19th and then uh, maybe uh, maybe we're going to have a have a carpool to charlotte the 5 hour drive to uh, to go and race some terra cross um, but uh, I don't know. Brimstone, Tennessee, September 18th and 19th, Camp Razor. Glamis, 30th and 31st of October. Halloween at Glamis, Camp Razor. It's the original Camp Razor. It's the biggest Camp Razor. It is awesome. If you haven't been there, you need to. I know we got a ton of Southwestern U.S. listeners. Put it in your calendar right now. Just plan on spending Halloween at Glamis. You won't be disappointed. Uh, the event just gets bigger and better every year. But uh, stoked to to see both the East and West Coast event back on the calendar for uh, for Polaris as far as Camp Razor goes. And, uh, you know, it, they're both going to be absolute great events. Hopefully you can make it out to one or the other. Um, Polaris, uh, Polaris's website has all the information on it. Uh, you know, it's in big writing. You know, it's a, it's a big announcement. A lot of you fans look forward to it each and every year. And then uh, got to give a shout-out to our friends at utvunderground.com. I had the opportunity to go out to the UTV, UTV World Championship. Now we're about a month away from that and a uh, month after and, and kind of all the aftermath is kind of clear. And they, they wrote an awesome article, kind of the behind the scenes of the UTV World Championship over there at, uh, at UTVunderground.com. What went into it, how the idea started, how the event was formed. A lot of photography and stuff involved. But, uh, you know, it's Joey D from UTV Underground, his words and, uh, you know, and how everything came together and uh, definitely a good read. So uh, that's at utvunderground.com. But uh, that has been your Polaris Razor UTV news for this week, brought to you by our partners over at Polaris Razor. And uh, you definitely want to uh, go and check them out online and uh, follow them on social media. Lots of good stuff pumping out of the Polaris Razor camp all the time. But right now we're going to, whoa, man, I'm getting tongue tied. That kind of sound a little southern there. We're going to, uh, we're going to uh, talk a little bit of Lucas Oil coverage right now. And uh, rounds one and two, you know, uh, coming out. And uh, you got to love rounds one and two at Lucas. Lucas traditionally starts a little bit sooner than Torque. Uh, seems like Lucas always uh, pulls a few torque teams in for that first round. Guys want to test their truck, things like that. And, um, you know, Lake Elsinore uh, laying host around uh, uh, to to the kickoff this year. Uh, years past has been in Arizona. This year uh, 
changing things up a bit and uh, and doing things out at uh, uh, doing things out at Elsinore. Elsinore, one of my favorite tracks. Like I've always said, it's super cross track for short course. Um, you know, the jumps are just absolutely mammoth. Um, you know, besides the step down at Reno, I mean, the, these jumps, if you haven't been to Elsinore, uh, you got to go. I mean, these trucks th- literally 20, 30 feet in the air. I know at one point they actually had to uh, adjust the lips of the jumps because the guys were going too big. And, um, you know, and, and everybody goes, oh, this is off road. These guys are, you know, you, you don't want to do that. Trust me, they were going too big. It was just ridiculous how far these trucks were, were going. But, uh, um, you know, one of my favorite tracks, I've been out there a few times, and uh, i got to tell you, it's always a ton of fun. But uh, we're going to get into uh, some results here real quick. And Pro Buggy, round one, Pro Buggy, it was all Garrett George, followed by Mike Valentine, Dave Mason, Chad George, and Sterling Kling rounding out your top five. Notable, C.J. Greaves got that deal with Roberts Racing. He's going to be running a Pro Buggy for them this year. And uh, he finished down there in seventh. So kind of kind of cool to see that C.J. Greaves uh, not only going to be running Torque, but he's going to be running Lucas, uh, you know, at least in a Pro Buggy. We'd love to see him in a Pro Light, Pro 2, Pro 4. But uh, Pro Buggy, you know, you know C.J., great uh, great guy to uh, to have racing Lucas, that's for sure. Uh, round two of Pro Buggy results uh, Chad George, Mike Valentine, Garrett George, C.J. Greaves sneaking into a fourth, and Dave Mason Rounding out your top five, gotta gotta wonder if running pro buggy was a little bit of adjustment for CJ. Used to the trucks uh, here recently, but uh, you know I'm sure he'll catch on and uh, definitely be fighting for podiums uh, each and every week. Uh, pro light round one, and a uh, pro light. You know this class is always just a crapshoot. Uh, it's an easy way to put it. Uh, it literally is a. Uh, uh, a crapshoot. Uh, Brad uh, Brad DeBerti uh, taking home a win. Uh, Jarrett Brooks in second. R.J. Anderson sneaking into third. Ryan Beat, our guest here in just a little bit, my general tire rigid industries teammate. He's up in fourth. Brandon Arthur in fifth. Young Gun. Then we had Jimmy Fishback, Brock Heger, uh, Dustin Nelson, Casey Curry, and DJ Noor uh, rounding out your top ten in pro light. Moving on to round number two in pro light and uh, brad to birdie once again sheldon creed sneaking in there with a second um and i got a note uh, sheldon creed uh, was disqualified from the first round so we got to wonder how that's going to affect his points later on this season sheldon perennial uh you know championship contender uh definitely probably going to throw a wrench in things at this point but uh, if anybody could battle back from a dq it's sheldon uh rj anderson in third jimmy fishback casey curry Brooks Mamer, Jeff Hoffman, Brock Heger, and Ray Griffith. Ray Ray sneaking into the top ten there, stepping away from uh, Class 1 cars and doing uh, doing the Lucas thing full time this year. We'll see if it uh, pays off for uh, Ray Ray Griffith. Um, but, uh, you know, he's another guy i got to definitely got to get on air at some point. Uh, you know, it's been a long time coming to, to get Ray Griffith on. Um, moving up to Pro 2 in round one. i got to tell you, Pro 2, uh, so, some wild, wild racing from these guys. Bryce Menzies taking the win. Renazetter in second. McCachran, Deegan, McGrath with a top five. Solid effort by Jeremy McGrath. Rodrigo Ampudia in sixth. And then we got Sheldon in the Pro 2. Uh, in seventh, Robbie Woods, Patrick Clark, and Tanner Faust moving into the top ten. I got to tell you, a big change for Tanner Faust. I mean, uh, last time last year he ran in in Lucas, in uh, you know, in that second McCachran entry. Uh, you know, he, he was running around at the back. I mean, I love Tanner. Tanner's a good friend of mine, but, uh, you know, he, he was figuring things out. You know, he, he really didn't have a chance. But seeing Tanner in the top ten, uh, that's very, very cool. I mean, it, it shows you this guy is uh, definitely dedicated to uh, to running Lucas. And I think as the year goes on, we're going to see him at a few rounds. And uh, um, I, I think he's going to compete for podiums. And uh, just uh, speaking of that, moving into uh, round number two, Menzies. Uh, McCachran, McGrath, McGrath with a solid effort. Um, then we had Anderson, Creed, Rodrigo, Ampudia, Tanner Faust with a seventh place. Uh, then we had Renazetter, Cooper, and Robbie Woods. So uh, Tanner Faust, uh, you gotta gotta give him credit, man. He's a quick learner, and uh, you know one of the my, most diverse guys in motorsports. And uh, you know he's run stage rally, he's run uh, uh, you know Formula D, rallycross, short course now. 
done some uh, road racing, I believe, just all over the place. But uh, he's picking up the, the the race craft for short course very, very fast. And obviously, running in a McAchran truck doesn't hurt things. Um, then we got uh, round four, General Tire with another win with uh, Carl Renazetter. Then we got Doug Fortin in second, Bryce Menzies third, McAchran Kyle LaDuke with a fifth in that brand new truck. We had Deegan, Daughtry, Chenny, and Gable, and Adler rounding out your top ten. So I think everybody was wondering out how fast this, car, you know, this new Pro 4 LaDukes was going to be. And, uh, well, we learned really quick. It was very fast. Taking home the win, Kyle LaDuke in the second round. Menzi second. Renazetter third. Um, McCachran, Chenny, Adler, Daughtry, Gable, Barron, and Deegan. Rounding out your top ten, tough, uh, tough break there. Only doing one lap for Doug Fortin with the, uh, uh, with some issues there on his. But uh, those are your winners, and uh, I got to tell you, um, great kickoff to uh, to the Lucas Oil season. Uh, you know, there in Elsinore, uh, it's enough to get the blood, you know, the blood boiling and, and everybody amp for, um, you know, for for what's to come. I mean, uh, you know. Lucas, uh, you know, they've done a great thing, as has, as has Torque, uh, you know, and definitely, uh, you, know, you know, taking short course to the next level. And, uh, you know, I, I got to say, I know uh, you're moving around the pits there, a lot of NASCAR guys heard Greg Biffle was in attendance, uh, heard Tony Stewart was in attendance. Uh, Tony Stewart, can you imagine him behind the wheel of a short course truck? You want to talk about crazy, uh, you know, and, and somebody that could probably wheel one, you know, wheel one like mad. Uh, Tony Stewart, gosh, you, you gotta gotta love the fact that he was around the pits area because Tony just doesn't go to races. He goes to scope it out, and then the next thing you know, he's he's behind the wheel. And uh, you know, with them being out there, I think uh, definitely good uh, good things for uh, for Lucas Oil short course. But uh, you know, that's uh, that's definitely been. Uh, your your short course coverage for this week and I don't know, man. Uh, it's going to be a great schedule. Obviously, Lucas visiting Mexico at one point this year, and I, I think uh, um, you know I think it's it's going to be a, a great season for 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 Lucas Oil. I think uh, you know that it continues to grow, continues to push, continues to draw entries and newer faces, newer personalities, newer people, and uh, and uh, I gotta say, man, it's uh, you know 2015 shaping up to be a great shootout. And uh, from what we saw, you know, multiple winners at, at round, round one and two, um, you know, and, and obviously I think everybody was wondering, hey, you know, what's the deal with Kyle LaDuke? Is he going to step up? And, you know, he's one that likes to, to win a bunch right away and, and check out on everybody. And, and that didn't happen. Um, that new truck, I think a lot of people a little scared of it, you know, and, uh, you know, Kyle, uh, Kyle was on point, took home a win, but, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the, the other guys have stepped up their game this off season as well. And, uh, you know, you got to give Tanner Faust credit, man. Seventh place, solid, solid finish for, for only his third time, uh, fourth time, I guess, uh, um, you know, fourth round in a, uh, in a pro two, that's a solid effort. A lot of guys spend a lot more time and, and never get to that result. So, uh, Good showing by uh, Mr. Tanner Faust. So that has been your Lucas Oil results for this week, brought to you by our good friends at General Tire. Uh, you can go and check them out on the web, GeneralTire.com. Don't forget, use the hashtag anywhere as possible when uploading your pictures. Let General Tire know where your General Tires have taken you. And this is General Tire's 100th anniversary. We're going to be doing some special stuff on air, tying in with that later on this year. But uh, got to thank General Tire for not only supporting my race program, but being involved with the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And, uh, you know, lots of lots of great finishes by General Tire drivers. And uh, I'm looking forward to after this break, we're going to take here in just a second, catching up with Mr. Ryan Beat. So this is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I am Jim Beaver, and uh, we're going to take a short break. Be sure, shoot me your questions at Jim Beaver 15 if you've got some questions on Twitter uh, for Mr. Ryan Beat or Amy Hood later on in the show, because uh, we're going to get up... Uh, we're, we're going to get Ryan Beat on air next after this break. So stay tuned to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? 
Polaris in their championship winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Looking to upgrade the brake system on your race car, pre-runner, or weekend toy? JMAR Performance Brake Systems has you covered. An industry leader in performance braking systems, JMAR can outfit your vehicle with the highest quality American-made calipers, rotors, master cylinders, hubs, turning brakes, and shifters for Volkswagens to trophy trucks and everything in between. For more information and their full product line, visit JMAR on the web at jmarperformance.com or follow them on Instagram and Twitter at JMAR Brakes. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Rigid Industries is the original and number one LED light bar manufacturer in the world. Torture tested by some of the best drivers in motorsports. Rigid LED lighting products use cutting edge technology and can stand up to the harshest conditions Mother Nature can dish out. Designed, engineered, and assembled in the United States, Rigid LED lighting is the only choice for your off-road vehicle or boat. Find out more information on the entire line of Rigid Industries LED lighting products at www.rigidindustries.com. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We are lit up by Rigid Industries, schooled by Dirtfish Rally School, anywhere is possible with General Tire, rolling on KMC wheels, and audio provided by MTX Audio. And uh, right now, we are waiting on my good friend Ryan Beat to call in. We're going to talk some Lucas Oil short course and find out what uh, what happened in round one with uh, with Ryan Beat, round one and round two. Uh, 
definitely a tough weekend, roller coaster of a weekend for uh, for Ryan Beat. But uh, uh, always good to catch up with him, and uh, one of the great uh, great personalities in in Lucas Oil Short Course, and a guy I've got a lot a ton of respect for. One of those guys that uh, literally, uh, you know, he's he's a lot like Steve Arpin, man. He makes stuff happen. You know, he doesn't not scared to get his hands dirty and knock on doors and. Uh, and uh, you know, and, and we've seen that, and, and Ryan always in pro light, uh, one of uh, you know one of the front running uh, front running drivers. Always uh, always great to catch up with him. And uh, man, that Lucas Oil opener at at Elsinore, I gotta gotta say, man, I, I can't wait to see it uh, on TV. You know, and and find out. Uh, you know, you know, you hear about all this stuff online, and you hear the press releases, and uh, you got to look forward to that TV show just to to see everything. Uh, you know, put in. Uh, in, into action, you know, you you hear about it, and it's like it's a big tease until the TV show comes out. So definitely looking forward to that whenever uh, whenever it drops here, probably within the next month, I would I would assume. But uh, Lucas with the with the, definitely with a solid TV package, as is uh, you know SST Torque. Uh, you know everybody you know in sure of course got uh, got some banging TV going on. But uh, um, yeah, it's uh, you know been a great weekend with that, and uh, you know Supercross coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking that uh, second half of this hour with uh, with Miss Amy Hood, and uh, you guys definitely want to uh, stay tuned for that. So if you got any Supercross talk, any questions, uh, you know, any questions for Amy, shoot me uh, shoot me over at uh, Jim Beaver fifteen on Twitter. Same goes for Ryan Beat. Already got a uh, a couple of questions shot in here. And uh, we'll definitely get those asked to Ryan when he uh, calls into the show in a few minutes. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Coming up this weekend, uh, it's like we're rolling, man. These off-seasons of, uh, you know, the off-seasons are now over and, and all these series are starting to uh, get their wheels in motion. And, uh, you know, we're starting to see... Uh, you know, starting to see uh, a lot of the drivers, uh, you know, make some big announcements for the series that uh, haven't started rolling yet. But, uh, uh, you know, coming up this weekend, we've got uh, obviously uh, SST, second round of that. Uh, got to look forward to that. And, you know, and, and you know, first uh, stateside race for Stadium Super Trucks. And uh, kind of looking forward to see uh, what drivers kind of come out. You know, obviously the opening rounds at Australia, uh, you know, a lot of drivers maybe couldn't make, uh, make the flight or the trip down there to Australia for that. So uh, you got to wonder, SST, we're going to see uh, see uh, some entry numbers boost. I definitely think we will. Um, you know, it's um, you know, it's it's always great to see uh, those, and uh, you know, and, and tying in with IndyCar, you know, Robbie always gets uh, always gets some some great personalities. Uh, you know, some great personalities uh, and drivers in uh, you know in in uh you know in those series uh you know calling in or uh you know <laughs> coming in to uh to play so uh you know you got to wonder who the crossover star is going to be in SST this year and uh you know and that's uh you know that's all going to happen here uh, coming up this weekend there in St. Petersburg Florida uh and I, I got to tell you I'm kind of kind of impressed with uh you know the SST calendar this year uh, you know Robbie uh you know it's kind of bounced around and I think he's finally found uh, what works for Stadium Super Trucks and uh you know it, with a diverse uh, group of uh races obviously you know running with IndyCar at uh, a lot of those rounds and and also going to be uh you know, running some stadium stuff in, in actual stadiums and, uh, you know, throwing some dirt in. And uh, I think, uh, you know, those trucks are, are definitely diverse. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to see – I think we're going to see some different drivers emerge this year, some that uh, maybe uh, are, are good at, at various uh, – various uh you know different uh different disciplines and uh you know and then you throw in x games in the mix and who knows what the heck's going to happen i mean you know i think uh last year what was it Abdelli lopez ended up taking uh taking the gold and i don't think anybody saw that coming uh, but uh you know just looking at the, the mid 400 man those lopez is uh you know, I, I don't know what's in the water, but uh, those guys are all, uh, you know, whether it be Juan Carlos, Abdelli, I mean, uh, you know, they are absolutely fast, those RPM trucks, uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, Lalo, Lalo Laguna, he's he's lightning quick as well. And, uh, man, there, there's something in the water, but uh, those guys, uh, they know what they're doing and uh, seeing them in anything, you know, here, here's hoping that we see Abdelli back in a, a SST, uh, you know, more often uh, than not this year. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely. Definitely lots to look forward to as uh, you know we kind of get rolling with uh, with these different series and uh, you know and and then we've got Torque you know we haven't even talked about Torque yet too much and uh, we definitely need to get BJ from Torque on air at some point I know I talked with him a few months ago but uh, they're rolling out the big announcements and uh, you know a lot of their drivers are rolling out the big announcements and um, gotta gotta really get you excited for uh, for what's to come with Torque I know uh, you know 
you know, talking with, uh, with, you know, talking with some of the drivers and then seeing a lot of the press releases, I think, uh, it's definitely going to be a, uh, uh, you know, a good, uh, you know, a, a good year for them, you know, especially, uh, with the venues they've got, you know, year two for, uh, year two for Sturgis, um, you know, and, and obviously Crandon is Crandon and, uh, you know, lots of, lots of shakeups going on this year in, in Torque and, uh, you know, a lot of drivers coming into the series. And I think, uh, it's pretty awesome that we're lucky enough to have two super, super healthy, uh, series, uh, you know, in the United States for short course, you know, and one predominantly based on the East, uh, you know, they come a little West, uh, here and there. And, and same goes for Lucas, uh, based in the West and, you know, may travel a little East, but not too much. Um, but I, I think we're we're very lucky that we've got two series that uh, are self sustaining, um, that have their own sponsorship packages and and their own groups of drivers and, and both of them healthy healthy fields of uh, of drivers. It's uh, um, it, it's definitely a uh, you know it's definitely a plus uh, you know for us and and a lot of these drivers. I mean you know making a living at doing it and I think that's been the biggest thing with off road racing for a long long time is. Uh, Drivers couldn't, uh, you know, drivers couldn't make a living at uh, at off road racing, whether it be desert or short course. And we've got to the day and age now where there's a few guys in desert making some money at it, um, you know, and, and that is their occupation. A lot of guys in short course doing it, and and I got to tell you, that's a new thing. Uh, you know, longest time it was you had a construction company, you had car dealerships, you had whatever, and and you went and that was your hobby, you know. And now the you know guys. Uh, you know, that's what they do, you know, for a long time, you know, the Kurt Ladukes of the world were, uh, were few and far between. And now, uh, you've got a lot of guys doing it. And, and even guys that do have other things like Carl Renazetter, I mean, his race program is self-supporting and, and self-sufficient. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, it runs off of sponsor dollars. And I think that's cool that we're bringing media packages together, uh, or putting media packages together that give us, uh, an opportunity to, uh, to actually, uh, you know, sell sponsorship and uh, and make a living off of uh, off of these motorsports. Getting a text from Ryan Beat as we speak, and he says, "Give him like one or two minutes. He's a little tied up at the moment, but he will be calling in." Um, so definitely looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you know what, what Lucas has built, what Torx built, what Robbie's trying to do with Stadium Super Trucks. Um, you know, it definitely uh, you know caters to the sponsors, and we've seen it. Uh, you know, whether you want to run Torx or Lucas, uh, you know, you got a great TV package there. Um, you know, and and you know some of these sponsors that are coming in, they're looking at things like IndyCar, they're looking at things like NHRA, NASCAR. And, uh, you know, off-road comes in and, uh, you know, the budget to, you know, run a front-running team is a whole ridiculously amount less. And, and same goes for Red Bull GRC. We can't leave them out. But, uh, you know, it's a ridiculously um, more inexpensive uh, than, say, NASCAR, IndyCar, NHRA. And, um, you know, the media value that's there it, a lot of times is, is just as much uh, – uh, you know, you know, obviously NASCAR, they, they're just got ridiculously TV, but you know, ridiculous TV, but uh, you know, the bang for the buck, it's, it's there with these, uh, action motorsports as we call them. And, uh, I think that's, uh, that's why a lot of sponsors are looking at this rather than NASCAR. And you see drivers hurting in NASCAR for sponsorship. Obviously, you know, the Jeff Gordons, the Jimmy Johnsons of the world, uh, they're always going to have, uh, sponsors. Obviously I know Jeff, uh, you know, announcing his retirement at some point, um, you know, full time racing. He said, you know, so he leaves that asterisk there. But uh, uh, you know, the Jimmy Johnsons, the Tony Stewart's of the world—they're always going to be able to find sponsorship. People know them; they're a front runner. Um, but we we're talking the mid packers, the guy you know in NASCAR running around twenty, twenty fifth out of you know out of forty something cars. Um, those are the guys hurting for sponsorship, you know, and and uh, and I think strictly because these action motorsports were drawing uh, those sponsors away that normally would be investing in those mid packers to uh, to say Lucas or Torque or Red Bull GRC because the sponsors for a lot less money than running mid pack in NASCAR can be front running in these series. So uh, it's definitely a, an interesting uh, interesting process, and I'd love to get somebody on just to talk sponsorship and. Uh, you know, in, in motorsports, I'm I'm just trying to think, brainstorm in my head who would definitely be good at that. And I've got a few names, but uh, you know, any of you have any names? I definitely look uh, look forward to suggestions. But I'd love to have a segment just talking about marketing and media and, and sponsorship in in these motorsports, especially action motorsports, because it's uh, um, you know it's uh, it's definitely a growing uh, growing market. And uh, you know, it, just the people I deal with on a daily basis, it's uh, it's pretty crazy who's looking at these motorsports that didn't say. You know, even even so much as three years ago. 
So uh, that being said, this big rant, it all uh, leads me to Ryan Beat, a guy that's uh, been very successful in the, the sponsorship hunt and, and keeping his program alive and well and uh, definitely works his butt off to uh, – you know, definitely works his butt off to uh, to continue to grow his program and his personal brand, and uh, I think he's been highly successful. We've seen him in, uh, you know, not only uh, Pro Light, we've seen him in Pro 2, Pro 4. Uh, you know, he was, uh, what was it, the, the Iron Man there for a while, running all the classes in, uh, in Lucas, so... Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, you know, not only Ryan, you got guys like Justin Bean Smith who are doing it. And, uh, I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool that, uh, allows these guys, uh, you know, that, uh, um, you know, that really have very little money, uh, you know, that are good drivers to, uh, to come in and, uh, you know, and get a car and, and be successful and run their own program and, uh, live the dream, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, definitely interesting times in, in off-road and action motorsports right now. And, uh, if you're a driver, it's, it's good times. I got to tell you, you know, it, if you've got your ducks in a row and your eyes dotted and your T's crossed, uh, there's there's more money to to go and get than ever. It's just uh, knowing where to find it and and offering value to, uh, um, you know, to those sponsors above everyone else. And uh, you know, a lot of guys are are definitely bringing that to the table, and and you're seeing it by the sponsorship dollars that uh, that they sign. And uh, um, you know, always uh, always good stuff. So uh, yeah, we got uh, Ryan Beat calling in here in just a minute. We're gonna catch up on some Lucas Oil short course. So shoot me those questions at Jim Beaver fifteen if you've got them. I've uh, got a couple of them in the queue for Ryan already. And then uh, Amy Hood, she's calling in here in about uh, 20 minutes, and we're going to talk some Supercross with Miss Amy Hood here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. So uh, shoot me those questions at Jim Beaver 15 for Amy Hood, and we'll talk some uh, two-wheel shenanigans and find out what Amy's up to. I think she got on her bike for the first time uh, this uh, this winter, her new bike. I think she was able to bust that sucker out in Canada. The the snow's starting to go away and uh, some of the cold, so sounds like the Moto Girls are uh, hitting the track up there in uh in uh, I guess the Great White North, so uh, it'll be good to uh, to catch up with uh, with Miss Amy. But uh, um, yeah, it's uh, man, talk about uh, a, a good couple of weeks, uh, big couple of weeks in motorsports. Uh, you know, obviously uh, Parker Four Twenty Five. Uh, UTV World Championship, Mint 400. Uh, we've got Lucas Oil kicking off. We've had Stadium Super Trucks and big Red Bull GRC announcements. Supercross is banging this year. Enduro Cross has kicked off. Uh, WRC's had some very interesting uh Interesting races, uh, you know, I, I, silly season is over, and now it's uh, the real deal, and uh, these series uh, starting to, to fire up and uh, starting to fire up and, and get the ball rolling, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely going to be a fun couple of weeks uh, with a lot of the events we have uh, we have coming up. Uh, that is uh, definitely for sure. But uh, right now we'll get to uh, some quick Enduro Cross results while we wait for uh, Mr. Ryan Beat to call in. But uh, Enduro Cross up there in Salt Lake City over the weekend. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's been a couple of rounds in now and uh, we're kind of getting a feel for things. But uh, Mike Brown on the Husky, on the Husqvarna, he took home the win. Colton Haker on another Husky. Those Huskies dominating uh, Enduro Cross up there in Salt Lake City. He finished up in second. Max Gersten in uh, third. We got uh, Cody Webb finishing up in fourth. Corey Graflander in fifth. Ty Tremaine in sixth. Uh, Nick Thompson, seventh. Kyle Redman in eighth. Kevin Rookstool in ninth, and Destry Abbott rounding out your top ten. So your point standings in AMA Enduro Cross right now, uh, your top five, Cody Webb and Colton Haker, they are tied for that top spot with 45 points apiece. Mike Brown in in third, I'm sorry, almost said in second, in third uh, with 43 points. So two points separating the top three guys. You want to talk about a great battle so far in Enduro Cross? You got it. Uh, Max Gersten in fourth. Um, he's at 36 points. We got Kyle Redman with 34 in fifth, and Corey Grafunder tied with him with 34 points in sixth. So right now we've got 11 points separating first through sixth position. Uh, you want to talk about a uh, you know <laughs> a great uh, a great series lining up, uh, man. And then uh, going over to the women, Sandra Gomez from Spain. She took her first enduro cross win of the season. She missed Daytona, uh, but came back and uh, and won this round. And uh, you know she actually had a bobble at the start, uh, crashed on the first obstacle of the race, got it back on the bike, ended up coming home and. Uh, 
and winning. Um, great, uh, great battle with her and, and Lexi Pashut, uh, Shelby Turner, Morgan Tonkey, um, who finished up in third. But uh, great, uh, great race for the women as well. But a big shout out goes to Sandra Gomez on that win. And a uh, big shout out to Mike Brown, who uh, took a win as well. And he's in that battle for uh, the first spot in uh, the Enduro Cross standing. So uh, that was your AMA Enduro Cross. Uh, results from Salt Lake City. That series uh, just getting underway, and uh, we'll have coverage of them throughout the summer. Uh, kind of one of my uh, one of my favorite series, you know. Now and and you know got to, got the live stream going on and and uh, do some great TV when you get to see it on uh, on television. But uh, you know their big one, uh, the X Games coming up. But uh, you know the big news coming out of there, Destry Abbott saying this is his last uh, season in competition, and. Uh, I got to tell you, I'm thinking Destry before the end of this deal, you're going to see him sneak a win out. Um, you know, you got to give it to the veteran. He's, he's going to go out with a bang, and I, I bet you see Destry Abbott with a win before this thing's over. It may come at the X Games. You never know. Uh, Destry, uh, you're going to pull a rabbit out of his hat at some point this season. I would almost bet on it. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Destry, he's, uh, he's just a great guy. You know, if you didn't hear his interview on the show, uh, you definitely want to skip back in the archives and, and check that out. But uh, Destry Abbott, uh, you know, he's he's holding his own for uh, for the old, the old dudes, as he puts it. But uh, um, I, I think he's going to gonna sneak one out before this year's over. But uh, Colton Haker, man, that guy, uh, you know, after last year, I think he's, he's definitely on a mission. You know, obviously uh, tied for that first place. But uh, I think to Colton Haker, if I had to pick one, I think, he's uh he's my pick for this season you know i think he's gonna be uh gonna be the guy uh you know the guy to be beat for sure um so uh you know those huskies though my goodness uh um god they're fast uh ridiculously fast this year and uh you know those i don't know man it's gonna be tough for uh for the ktms and uh you know, to, to play catch up and then, uh, you know, you, you throw in the betas and, uh, you know, it's what you love about Enduro Cross and some different names you don't normally see. But, uh, um, you know, the, the Huskies, man, super, super solid this year. And, uh, you know, I, I think they're going to be definitely tough to be beat in Enduro Cross. So, uh, I don't know, shoot me, uh, shoot me your picks. I want to know who you think. Uh, but I think Colton Haker, man, this guy, uh, he's my pick to win it all this season. And uh, like I said before, we are still uh, hanging tight, waiting for Ryan Beat to call in. He must have really been sidetracked. I have to give him a little crap when he calls in. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's a great weekend of racing for uh, uh, for Lucas Oil. Ryan Beat taking home that fourth uh, uh, taking home that fourth place finish at one point and, uh, you know, and then, uh, having the roller coaster, um, up and down, up and down. And, uh, you know, and, uh, Ryan beat, uh, obviously, uh, you know, definitely got taken out in the second round of racing. Uh, and, uh, you know, not what he, uh, not what he wanted, definitely not what, uh, you know, how he wanted to finish things up. Um, but, uh, you know, Ryan, uh, Ryan, he's a class act. He's a veteran. He's going to rebound. And uh, I think you're going to come back and, uh, you know, last year he'd been known to take some double podiums. I think, uh, that definitely could, uh, could, uh, come to fruition, uh, you know, this year in 2015. So, uh, looking forward to that call in from Ryan here in just a minute. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, been a great show so far, you know, recapping Lucas Oil, talking with Steve Arpin, and uh, talk about some blockbusters by Steve Arpin, uh, some absolute blockbuster announcements uh, coming coming from him, and uh, Ganassi Racing entering Red Bull GRC, um, it's huge, you know, uh, Andretti coming in last year, was like, oh, wow, you know, and I, I think you start seeing these major teams like Andretti, Ganassi, uh, start looking at the series as a is a viable uh, you know as a viable uh, business plan uh, you know and and you know and that's a you know this is some big props to to Red Bull GRC uh, you know I don't think three four years ago anybody would have ever saw that but uh, you know I think this year it's uh, you know these guys looking at it and uh, when you see these guys look at it then you start getting all the other teams go hey what are we missing here we're missing the boat on something you know and then they start looking at it and. Uh, and and you know i could definitely see uh 20 cars at uh, at every round uh you know on the grid next year uh you know in 2016 i i definitely could see a a 20 car uh you know 20 cars uh trying to make the show and and make the cut to to make it to the final and uh you know and i think that would be cool you know you get to a point where you know just like supercross where you get all these guys coming in and and wanting to make the show and uh you know and and then things uh 
you know, and then things happen, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and sometimes you don't make it. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think that would be a great thing in the competition level. The bar would definitely be raised for, for Red Bull GRC if, uh, you know, if we could get to that point. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, definitely, uh, you know, definitely a long time coming. I know a lot of us knew the, the Ganassi announcement uh, coming at some point. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome, uh, you know, that, that they're here. Uh, they're in a Ford, obviously tying in with their EcoBoost program that they, uh, that they run in, in road racing. Um, you know, and, and it's definitely a big deal. And, uh, you know, and signing Deegan and Arpin, I mean, two, uh, two, two big signings and, and Deegan, uh, you know, obviously he's got his conflicts with his, uh, with his Lucas oil schedule and, you know, and that's why he's only running seven rounds. But as we saw last year, even on a partial schedule by Brian Deegan, when he's there, I mean, he is on point and, uh, you know, you give the general, uh, nothing to lose, which obviously you can't compete for a points championship. He gets to be really dangerous behind the wheel because, uh, it's all about the wins at that point. And then we know Deegan can, can definitely bring those in, but, uh, you got to think he loves doing both. Uh, obviously, you know, the all wheel drive, uh, cars and short course, uh, you know, they definitely, uh, help each other. And, and I think that's why we've seen him grow as a driver in, in both series and, and, uh, you know, get to the caliber that he is, uh, currently because, uh, He's definitely, uh, definitely one of uh, the most diverse guys, and and heck, the guy can still drop, jump on a on a dirt bike once in a while, and uh, and uh, you know, and rip on that as well. You know, you see it from his social media. So, uh, um, lots of good things coming up, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's definitely been uh, definitely been <laughs> been an interesting off season. You know, and I think a lot of announcements coming nobody would have expected, but. Uh, you never quite know uh, what you're going to get in motorsports. That's uh, that's definitely the truth, and uh, um, it's uh, you know as as these series uh, start getting closer to kick off, you know I think uh, even you know with Torque and some of these others as uh, they get close to kick off, uh, we're going to see even more uh, more of these big announcements coming, especially uh, you know from Red Bull GRC. I'm sitting on a few, biting my tongue that I know. Uh, you guys are absolutely going to be uh, mind blown when they get uh, get released. So uh, definitely looking forward to uh, to seeing that. But uh, right now we are uh, we are going to take a uh, short commercial break, and uh, when we come back, uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll have Ryan Beat. Maybe we'll have a- Amy Hood. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. <laughs> I'm Polaris driver Jim Beaver. I host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, travel the country announcing motorsports events, and I compete against some of the toughest drivers in the world in my number 15 trick truck in the Best in the Desert Championship. I know what it takes to survive Baja and races like the Mint 400 or Vegas Torino, and that is reliability. When I choose to train, pre-run, or just take my family out to the desert or dunes on the weekend, I trust Polaris Razor products exclusively. I need the absolute best performing vehicles that I know will get me back safe, fast, and without any problems. The only vehicle on the market that I know will do this is the Polaris Razor. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world driving the Polaris Razor. Check out the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible.
Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Did you know that Parker Motor Company is one of the best places to shop for new tires for your car or truck? With a full tire shop and advanced equipment, we can outfit your vehicle with over 13 brands of tires, including Goodyear, BF Goodrich, Yokohama, Falcon, and General. We offer a low price guarantee that will meet or beat any competitor's price. We'll check your alignment for free, and we also offer tire care for any road hazards you may come across. If you need new tires, Parker Motor Company is your only choice. Parker Motor Company, your hometown Ford and Lincoln dealer. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, and uh, I am stoked to uh, have Ryan Beat on the line. What's happening, Ryan? Not much. How are you? Doing all right, buddy. Uh, I know uh, you know we were texting back and forth in the break, and I know you had uh, some sponsor obligations, but uh, gl- stoked to have you here in the house. And uh, take us through this uh, opening round of Lucas Oil, because uh, obviously you had uh, one heck of a roller coaster, buddy. Yeah, for sure. This weekend was pretty gnarly. Um, I got uh, a call. Wednesday night, about nine o'clock at night, um, from a good buddy of mine, Brian Deegan, and he asked me, uh, "Hey man, uh, wanted to know if you could do me a favor and drive my uh, Pro Two for me this weekend." So of course, uh, being thrilled, uh, I said, "Yeah," and you know, told him I'd do whatever I could to help him. He's uh, been uh, kind of under an illness and not feeling so well the past couple weeks, so uh, he asked me if I'd do it. So I said, "Yeah, of course, why not?" Uh, not to mention uh, opening weekend for. Uh, my pro light, uh, I guess, uh, run for a championship. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's definitely a uh, cool news. And, uh, you know, so take us through uh, pro light, obviously, uh, you know, you had a great run, uh, starting things off, uh, you know, fourth place finish in, uh, you know, in the, in the first round, then moving into, uh, into second round, man, it sounds like you had some, some heck of a bad luck. Yeah. Uh, Friday night went really well in pro light and pro two, um, pro light started off and actually just had like a, a pretty solid, you know, 14 lap battle. With Sheldon Creed, me and Sheldon went back and forth for that uh, third, fourth, fifth position with a couple other guys there the whole race. So uh, coming out of there, ended up, you know, with a with a fourth position, which was uh, really good. Um, great start to the season. And then we went and jumped in Pro Two later that night and uh, ended the night in Pro Two with a fourth as well. So Friday night was really well, and then Saturday uh, was hoping to to improve just a little bit we wanted to try to get on the box in pro two which i felt like we had a really good chance and then uh pro light as well so we started off the, the night in pro light we started a little further back had a had a little issue in qualifying um and you know we started in the sixth position which we shouldn't be back there to begin with anyways but pro light class for some reason seems like once you get past qualifying outside of that top three um, you're just asking for trouble and the guys back there for some reason seem to unplug their brain on the first lap and don't realize it's a 14 lap race and went diving down into turn two and I had a guy on my outside and a guy on my inside and of course the guy on the inside thought he was going to out jump everybody and jumped way too deep in the corner kind of t-boned me up high and kind of pushed me up high and the guy outside squared up and came down across the like he was going to try to square up and go across the bottom of us and I don't know if he mistimed it or what, but he just basically T-boned my rear end and tore the rear end out of the truck. So uh, that was my end for my uh, pro light race on uh, Saturday night. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a bummer. So the pro two uh, deal with Deegan, just uh, he's under the weather, just a complete, uh, just a one-off deal, just uh, helping a buddy out. Yep, yep, just helping a, a rock star teammate out, and uh, he said he needed somebody to to get in his truck and uh, said he didn't have any more confidence or trust anybody more than he trusted me and he really wanted me to get in it. So um, it was a great opportunity, had a lot of fun, got in it Saturday night, was looking to try to put the thing on the box. We were fast and qualifying. So uh, went into the main event and second lap in, came up over the Matterhorn jump and landed. 
got off the gas, threw it sideways, and went to get back in the gas, and it kind of just sputtered and died. And uh, unfortunately, couldn't get to refire. Come to find out, we broke a timing chain in the motor and ended our ended our night right then and there. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a bummer. So let's talk a little bit about Pro Light, man, because this class is. Uh is crazy. I mean, <laughs> you know, the amount of, the amount of drivers trying to, trying to make the main, I know they've gone to the last chance qualifier and, and everything else, but it still seems like it's, it's absolute chaos. I mean, I, I, you know, I look at things like Supercross and, and, you know, they, they narrow things down to uh, what is it? A 22 bike field at this point. I, um, and, uh, you know, and, and these guys somehow seem to get through the first corner and, and through, <laughs> through the races without major problems. But it's like, it seems like pro light, it doesn't matter what they do. There's just, there's something that happens, man. And like you said, guys just switch their brain off. Yeah, you know, uh, it's unfortunate. Pro light isn't really a professional class anymore. It's kind of just however much money your dad can bring to the table to buy you into pro light. Um, <laughs> it's just, after racing Pro Light, Pro Two, and Pro Four over the past couple of years, Pro Light is the class. It's just kind of like it's just not a fun class anymore. It used to be a lot of fun. Um, it was really cool, you know. The present brain and the V8 made it a little more affordable. But with that, everybody else decided to jump in Pro Light, you know, give it a shot. And, and with that, you know, it being more affordable, now everybody thinks they can jump in it, and it's not just professional drivers anymore. It's kind of just you know guys that really shouldn't be out there. I mean, there's the exception of the few drivers that are really good that have jumped in the class. Um, but unfortunately you just, you get a lot of uh, the riffraff, you know, guys that, that really shouldn't be out there that end up ruining a lot of people's nights. You know, they, they overdrive corners and they over jump stuff and land on top of people or T-bone you. And just, just, you know, it happens to everybody. And unfortunately, we, unfortunately we all have to deal with it, but it just makes it for uh, a long race here when you're constantly repairing tore up trucks. Yeah. Well, and, and here's an idea, and this is, you know, kind of something I was thinking about. I mean, you know, Pro-Lite, there's so many trucks out there. I mean, you almost feel like, uh, you know, these guys, when they want to jump into Pro-Lite, you know, I think Pro-Lite ought to become a full-time regional class, and, uh, and, and these guys literally have to do a year in regionals in a Pro-Lite before they can step up with a national license. I would think that uh, would be the, a great idea that you at least have to have a full year of regional in Pro-Lite before you jump into the pro class. I think it's just, you know, a lot of these kids coming out of trophy carts, they're good. So they, they go, okay, go to a regional. And they, you know, they, they run lap times that are decent at the regionals. But it's not so much about running the speed and running lap times. Then anybody can go out there and hang out for one lap. It's about making the right choices that when you're on the track, not to tear up your equipment or other people's equipment because you're a bonehead and you're too immature to, to really understand what's going on, you know? It's a... Uh, there's more than just let's go hang it out for a lap and go fast for one lap. It's you know timing. It's it's calculating passes, calculating moves throughout the race so that you know it, it makes a good racing. Not just hold it to the floor, and hang on, and then smash a bunch of people while you're doing it. Yeah, I I completely agree with you there, man. And and I know we're, we're facing that in desert racing as well. You know, a lot of these guys jumping into class one and trophy truck, it's uh, you know they don't have the experience, but they can write a check. You know, and they're in there, and it's uh, they're fast. But when you get out on course and you get in certain situations, they just don't know the the proper procedure or how to handle it. You know, and it's like almost they panic when they get into one of these positions because they just don't have the seat time. Yeah, and I'm sure as you guys see in the desert too, you get these guys that they see you coming up on them or they see that you're racing around them and it's like instantly ego goes through the moon or dad's ego goes through, goes through the moon on a spotter radio and they instantly have something to prove and it's like you're not going to prove nothing by beating me one race. Go out and get 20 some podiums like I've done or you know, go out and, and podium in every class like I've done then, then you'll get the respect. Don't go out and try to prove something in one race and smash my equipment, your equipment, other people's equipment up, you know, it's uh it's frustrating, but, you know, at the end of the day, we all have to deal with it, and, and you just got to be better. You got to find a way to, to get faster and, and, and beat them. Yeah, you know, and I think it definitely sucks for guys like you, and uh, you know, and I think of a guy like you, and I mean, you you worked your butt off to get where you're at, you know, and knocked on doors, and and you know, you find sponsorship dollars, and and you got, you know, and you you're able to, you know, somewhat make a living off of this, and you got guys, Justin Bean Smith, another one that you know that, that's similar to you, where you know the guy works his ass off to to get where he's at, and you know, for you guys to get taken out by somebody that you know this is just a weekend hobby, it, it definitely sucks. Yeah, it does, it does suck. Me and Justin talk quite often. We're we're buddies, and you know, between me and him and Casey, we talk quite a bit about this class. And it's just it's so frustrating. This class used to be a really fun, a good competitive class that it wasn't like this. And for some reason, just with the 
bringing in the V8s and, and allowing, you know, the younger generation without ha- making them go through the regionals and spend the correct amount of time in the regionals has really kind of hurt the class, I think. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's racing. What do you do? You know, it's, it's the evolution of a sport. So you just got to evolve with it or get out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I uh, got a couple of fan questions we're getting sent in and, and kind of answered uh, one of them already. But uh, the biggest one was uh, – um, pro light, uh, you know, obviously you ran pro light. We know we saw, you know, one off with, with in Deegan's truck and pro two, but, uh, you know, long-term plans is, uh, what are, what are the plans? You, you happy in pro light or, uh, you know, you, you eventually, would you love to step up to pro two or pro four permanently? I really like racing pro two and pro four. I'd like to get up into those classes, but you know, I got to put my time in pro light and get, uh, get some more wins and, and, uh, try to run down a championship. Um, you know, I, I'd like to race pro light a couple more years, but also throw in pro two as well. So we'll see. We're going to um, kind of take this year slowly and see what we can do and try to round up some sponsorship to, to be able to make a run at, you know, maybe doing pro two next year. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, another question coming in from uh, one of our longtime listeners, Gwen, and uh, she's, she's asking, uh, mm-hmm. you know, she's asking Torque, uh, are we ever going to see you run Torque, possibly maybe do some Crandon, uh, you know, or are you pretty happy, uh, you know, running the full Lucas Oil schedule? I'm pretty happy running a full Lucas Oil schedule. Um, to be honest, I'd just like to see Torque go away and Lucas take over those tracks so that uh, we can have some good racing. Um, you know, it's a, it's a shame that there's two series. It's really hurting all the racers in the end of it. You know, realistically, people think it's good to have two series. It's just hurting the chase for, you know, for us to find sponsorship dollars. We can't get manufacturers involved in the short course program because there's two series. If they all came together as one and had one TV package. I think all the races could actually turn this into a really good thing. So until that happens, I probably won't be racing back over there. Okay. Um, well, you know, and, and talking about this year, I mean, what, what are the plans for you? Obviously a uh, full-time Lucas schedule, uh, you know, you got any, any other projects in the works? To be honest, not really. Um, I'm kind of just focused on Lucas. I really want to, want to do well. You know, I've got a, a second place championship run, um, under my belt, uh, to another top five. Um, I'd like to add to that. I'd like to add another, you know, top three or four, um, championship run, um, to, you know, my, I guess my resume and just focus on Lucas, just focus on pro light and racing Lucas and then doing the best I can here and representing Rockstar and Lunar Pages, Bill Martin General Tire as best as I can, you know, uh, Rigid really stepped up for me this year and uh, put together a program for, for me to kind of help grow my program. So um, we're looking at trying to start building the Pro 2 this, this year and, and uh, see what we can do the following year in Pro 2 and Pro Light. Awesome. Well, it sounds uh, sounds like you got uh, definitely a, a busy plate, you know, a busy plate in front of you, you know, trying to trying to run for for those championships. But uh, you know, I think uh, I think it's you know I think it's cool that a guy like you can come in and, and dedicate yourself to uh, to short course. And I was talking about it during uh, during one of the breaks, you know, that that Lucas has built a package where a guy like you can come in and and some you know and, and make a living off of it, you know, or at least uh, you know have the sponsor dollars to come in and, and to help sustain your program. Yeah, definitely. Lucas has done a phenomenal job at, at helping the racers get to the point and, and providing us with the TV package and, and marketability to be able to put together programs that have enough dollars, but not only just enough dollars to run the trucks, but to, to make a small living off of it. By no means are any of us off of racers getting rich off of racing off-road, but if we can live and get to race a, a off-road truck for a living, I mean, how can you complain? I mean, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you had some uh, some calls earlier and stuff, and uh, you know, but we'll definitely have to catch up with you after a few rounds and uh, and kind of keep tabs on you this year and, and see how you know the program's going. For sure, definitely. Let me know, and uh, love being on the show. And thanks everybody for listening. All right, thanks a lot, Ryan. Take it easy, buddy. No worries. Take care. All right. All right, that was uh, Ryan Beat, uh, you know, good friend calling in, and uh, yeah, he was on he was on some sponsored conference calls, and that was kind of the delay, and uh, um, you know, and and that's what uh, took us a little bit of time to to get to Ryan, but still stoked to have him, and uh, you know, running Pro Two for Brian Deegan this weekend, and then obviously. Uh, uh, you know, running his pro light program and, and interesting stuff coming out of that, talking about pro light. And, uh, you know, we, we've heard it before and, and, uh, you know, there, there is a lot of these young kids and, and I think, uh, you know, same thing we're facing in desert racing needs to be some type of, of licensing or, or something to, uh, you know, that, that helps, uh, you know, that, that these guys have to spend some time in a, in a certain class, uh, or at the regional level before, 
they graduate into the big show, and I think it's that way in every other motorsport. And I think uh, you know off road would would traditionally slow to catch on, um, but I think it's it's coming to that. And I think uh, you know same goes for Pro Two, Pro Four. You got to spend X amount of time in a Pro Light before you can jump up to a Pro Two or Pro Four. Uh, you know, unless you have some some other type of racing experience that allows you to transition over. But uh, uh, I, I definitely think there's a ladder system, and I think it needs to be followed. And, uh, you know, I feel the same way about desert racing. And, and you don't see any other, you know, any other motorsport in the world. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, if you want to go and run, uh, you know, NASCAR Cup, you can't just do it if your dad's got a deep pocketbook. Uh, you know, you got to go through the ladder system before uh, before they'll even think about letting you in one of those cars. And I think uh, I think that's definitely uh, uh, something that off road needs to look at, and uh, you know, and we need to do because I think uh, you know ultimately to grow this, it, it needs to be that way, and, and it definitely helps with sponsors, and and it helps. Uh, it's going to ultimately help uh, on uh, you know, it's going to definitely help on track racing. Um, you know, you know, as far as competition goes, and it's going to be a lot cleaner and, and closer racing, I think, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when these guys get the experience they need to, to run at the pro level in pro light, because pro light is a pro class and, uh, you know, and, and I think it, it recently, it hasn't quite been treated as much. Uh, you know, you've got these great talents like beat and Casey Curry, RJ Anderson, uh, obviously Justin Bean Smith, Deegan, you know, you know, dabbles in it, uh, from time to time. And, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, you've got these great talents. Balance, but uh, you're, you're mixing in a lot of kids with no experience uh, at a pro level, and and uh, things uh, things get out of hand. But uh, right now we got Amy Hood calling in, and uh, we're going to talk some Supercross with Amy. Uh, how's it been going, Amy, up there in Canada? I think you got to bust out your new bike, right? Hey, how's it going? Uh, yes, I had my first ride finally this weekend um, out of the sand pit. But uh, yeah, my new 2015 Honda is sweet. Yeah, I was going to say. Now we have about three inches of snow today. You, you're kidding me. You were telling me, you know, the whole time, oh, it's been cold, but we don't have any snow. You're able to get the bike out. Now the snow drops when you finally get it get 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 it out there? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, I guess we got, and apparently we're supposed to be getting, like, a dumping um, coming the next little while, too. So, I... Uh-oh. Amy, uh, Amy dropped there. She'll, uh. Should call back in. Don't know what happened there. Maybe uh, maybe she hit the off switch on her phone. But uh, um, yeah, we uh, dropped a call. We we rarely do that. Uh, I don't know what the heck happened there. Um, yeah, but uh, Amy should uh, should be calling back in here in a sec. Uh, um, total weirdness. But uh, sounds like uh, getting a little snow up there in Canada, and uh, that isn't good for uh, for the racing scene. I don't know uh, know what happened there with uh, with Amy, but uh, we'll get her dialed back in here in a second. Uh, maybe she lost service on her cell. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little Supercross and, uh, you know, things uh, things getting a little, uh, little crazy up there in Detroit. And uh, I got to tell you, if you haven't, go to Chad Reed's uh, Chad Reed's Twitter account. Go to go to his social media. I, you know, he had some uh, some interesting things to say uh, regarding uh, regarding the race in uh, you know the race in Detroit. Hey, Amy, how's everything going? Oh, what? Sorry, I lost you there. Yeah, I don't know. We dropped somehow, but uh, um, yeah. So you were telling me uh, getting a little bit of uh, getting a little bit of snow up there in Canada, huh? Yeah, I mean, again, just when I get my new bike out and ready to roll. It decides to snow. I was all pumped to go riding again this week, but I guess I'm going to have to hold off a little longer. Yeah. So we're supposed to get about five to ten more inches again. So, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, you're going to have to take that thing down south, man, and uh, to a little warmer weather and let her rip. I know, I know. I got this, you know, day job thing happening, so it's a little hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Darn, darn day jobs getting in the way of all the fun. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, did you have a chance to watch in uh, in Detroit uh, the the shenanigans happening there? I did, definitely. Of course. Um, I mean, it was super awesome weekend for Factory Honda, having you know two podiums this weekend. But I mean, other than that, it was a little bit of a boring race. Not too much passing or action kind of going on. But um, you know, really did shake up the points a little bit. Um, hats off to Tomac and Bogle. It was you know, they had two great rides. It was really cool to see them win. You know, it's it's nice to see someone else get the top of the podium again. And you know, so far in the season, it's uh, it's pretty surprising. But I mean, it's too bad that it took this long. You know, ten rounds for Tomac to finally, um, you know, get things clicking because with the ride that he had, if he started off the season as strong as he rode last night, 
you know, the points would be completely different. And I, I think we would, would have seen a battle to the end. So it's too bad, but it kind of shows what, you know, what we're going into outdoor season with. But, um, you know, he, he rode awesome. Pulled away. I think he had a 14-second lead by the end of the moto. So um, great ride from Tomac. Yeah. Well, and i got to ask you, do you, have you paid any attention uh, this morning to Chad Reed's uh, Twitter account? No, I haven't. Uh, Why? Is it, there some, some stuff going down or what? Yeah, he, he le- literally, uh, he said he's, his timeline's getting uh, blown up, so he says, I'm going to give you my two cents, and he, and he gave like 10 points. So I'll quick run you through them, but uh, uh, Chad Reed, I know I've reached out to him, and I, I think sometime before Supercross is over, we're going to have Chad on air, so uh, that definitely will be fun. But, uh, um, you know, it's just basically on Supercross in general, but I'm going to quick give you the rundown on these points real quick. Uh, number one, he says, what's... So he, sorry, did you say he gained points or lost no, points? No, no, no. He gave a few talking points. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, okay. It, yeah. So no, number one, he said, what's sad about our sport is why does it have to take bigger name guys getting hurt, uh, for the, for them to make changes? It seems like, uh, oh, you know, he's, really? yeah, he says, uh, you know, younger guys are, are the, you know, the guys you don't know, the name brand guys, they get hurt. Nobody cares. One of the big names, all oh, we need to change something, you know? Um, number two, he says, uh, would there be talk of needing, uh, safer tracks if, uh, if, if the first point didn't happen, he says, so, um, you know, if, if the big guys didn't get, uh, hurt, he's all, would they ever talk about needing safer tracks? He goes, I think not. He says this weekend's race in Detroit was one of the best tracks of the year. He said the track mm-hmm. had zero to do with any of the injuries or crashes that happened. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. The, the track this week was a lot, lot safer, um, so this season started off really, really gnarly, really technical tracks. Um, even last week, and there were so many crashes. So, um, you know, it's we got to keep these riders safe. Like they're, you know, they're professional athletes that um, you know, people are paying big money to come and watch these guys race. And if they're getting hurt and they're out all season, you know, it's um, it's really saying something about the sport. So um, nice that he said something about that, though. It's really cool. Yeah, you know, and then he says a lot of people are wanting to go back to two strokes and saying the bro- four strokes are the reason why mm-hmm. people are crashing and everything else. He goes, that's asinine. He's like, these are the best bikes we've ever had and the safest bikes. Yeah. Is, you know, so I, I don't know. It's it's pretty interesting read. I'm not going to go through all the points, but Chad uh, definitely, uh, when he talks, people listen, you know, and, and he had some good yeah, points sure. on his Twitter Twitter account this morning. Uh, he must have been stuff that was, uh, that was sitting, you know, sitting for a long time. He just needed to get out, you know? Oh, yeah, I think it's really important that the riders are vocal and say something um, because you have all these people who are making changes who don't even race, who have, you know, who sit behind the sidelines or sit up in a box and, you know, crunch numbers or, you know, do something that doesn't involve any racing. So it's really important that riders speak out, speak their mind, and, you know, tell it how it is. And that's the only way that there's ever going to be changes made is if, you know, and the right changes made is if, you know, riders speak up and, really um you know voice their opinion so well, and I, and um I- good for him yeah you know and, I, and i'm hoping with chad you know because obviously he's still racing at a high level i mean he's a he's a top five guy uh you know we've seen him take mm-hmm. a win this year but i'm hoping whenever he does decide to retire and, and i have no idea when that's going to be i mean he could ride a couple more seasons he could call it quits this year we just don't know um but i'm hoping yeah. he takes a position almost like a ricky carmichael where he's hands-on you know every day or yeah. you know every round and, and helping with track design and, and things like that because you know ricky's a guy who you know to be honest with you he could probably get on a bike and still run top five in supercross you know <laughs> and uh, i hope yeah, I know, chad, you know i hope chad takes a position like that within supercross and motocross where he's there and and helping advise you know i think chad's gonna have a huge part in racing because he has you know tate who's a, a, a little young gun coming up like chad is going to be a moto dad for sure so i think that'll really help keep him involved in racing you know for the rest of his life as well um you know ricky i don't see too much of his kids riding they're into some equestrian i know that their kids like horses and stuff so um you know it's really cool that chad has the whole family side of racing too which will allow him to have some longevity and you know hopefully get involved as well not so much announcing i'd be cool if he gets involved in something else but i guess we'll just have to wait and see i you know i don't think chad reed is going to be quitting anytime soon he's still having you know a really successful career finishing fourth overall this weekend alone like that's now, that's huge for an older guy, and um, 
I think he'll be around a lot longer. I, I honestly give him like five more years racing. So Yeah, you know, and I think Chad's one of those when he finally thinks he can't run up front, he's not going to be one of those guys that sits around and, and runs around in 15th place. You know, I think he'll he's going to go out on top, and when he doesn't think he can be at an elite level, he's just going to pull the plug on it. Yeah, no, he'll definitely go out with a bang for sure. So I just hope he sticks around a little bit longer because I, I think he's maturing a lot as a rider and becoming a, you know, um, you see Chad Reed go up and down in ways. So when he started, everyone loved him. And then, you know, a year in, everyone hated him. And then everyone started liking him again. And, you know, he kind of goes through these highs and lows. And right now he's at a, a peak and a point where, you know, he's, a lot of people respect him. You know, some people may not. I know a lot of women <laughs> racers may have something questionable to say. But, um, you know, Chad's kind of coming into his own now. And, um, being a voice for the industry. So I, I hope he goes out with a bang. I hope he, you know, ends his career on a high note. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. So as we wind down uh, Supercross, I hate to say that because it seems like we just started doing this, but we're, we're literally like on the on the downhill slide of Supercross. But I mean, you know, okay. what, yeah. What do you think? I mean, uh, you know, two fifties, four fifties. Obviously, we've got East and West to to worry about in the two fifties. I think obviously at this point, Dungey, it's all but his. You know, on the four fifty side of things. But what do you think about the two fifties? I mean, both East and West. Well, they crunched some numbers actually, and. Apparently, and right now, I mean, with Bogle having such a great ride, I think that's going to do numbers for his confidence, and I think he's going to end off the season really, really strong, um, you know, hopefully getting a couple more wins. If you listen to him on the podium, he is so confident and just having fun, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm out here, I know I'm not going to win them all, but I'm out here trying my best and having, having fun, and he just has a huge smile. He just seems so confident and so in the zone. And, you know, doesn't have a care in the world and is just out there to ride his dirt bike and have a good time. And, you know, that's why he's so successful in winning races because he's truly enjoying what he's doing. And that that's huge. You know, confidence, we always talk about it, such a big part in racing. And when you can master that confidence, you can, you know, really, you know, bring out the best riding in yourself. So. I think that this win tonight is really, or this weekend is really going to do uh, a lot for his confidence. But they did crunch some numbers, and apparently, for Bogle to win the championship, he would have to win every race from here on to Vegas, and Marvin would have to actually finish fourth or or worse. So you know, unless there are some mechanical problems where Marvin has a DNF, um, he does have a clear shot to the championship. So guess we're just going to have to wait and see. And I don't wish bad luck upon anybody. It was really too bad to see Joey Savacci, who is, you know, ha- he's right there to finish on the box for the championship. But, you know, he had a DNF, and it really screwed him immensely for points. So I don't wish that upon anybody. I love to see everybody finish the race. So, um, you know, I I think Marvin has this thing wrapped up for sure. Yeah, well, and, and on the you know on the the west side of things, I mean, obviously uh, Cooper has a thirty point lead over over Nelson, uh, you know. So yeah. you, you got to think uh, Webb's got uh, got it in the bag at this point. But I got to tell For you, sure. you know, you as a motocross uh, racer yourself, I mean, you know, the west side of things, they they've had a ton of time off. Uh, does yeah, no, definitely. Does 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 that amount of time off in the middle of a season? I mean, affect them? I mean, do you think Cooper could come back and and you know and and possibly Nelson be on point and Cooper you know a little rusty? I mean, it's a big break they take. No, no. I mean, right now, the West Coast actually has an advantage over outdoors because there is like no time off between Supercross and outdoors, and those guys, the West Coast, are just training for outdoors now. So, you know, they're riding every day. There's no time off in racing. Even though we say there's a break in the series and, you know, they got a couple weeks off, they're not off. They are just training for outdoors, you know, dialing in their Supercross still. Um, I think they have a little bit of an advantage over the East Coast guys. So they're only training, um, you know, Supercross up until the point of their, you know, the East Coast season starting, where the West Coast guys have a little bit of time to test the outdoor bikes, test the outdoor tracks. I've been following Instagram and seeing a lot of them, you know, um, hitting up Glen Helen or Clear Creek and getting their feet wet for outdoors. So they're still on point and riding, and I think Cooper is still going to be on the top of his game. And he is such a dominant outdoor rider that, you know, they kind of have a little bit of fun getting to train off um, outdoors. So I think that uh, they're going to, you know, 
ready to rock for the come of the, the, the final few rounds there of the West Coast. But now Cooper will be on point. You watch it. He's going to dominate and kill everybody. So I just can't wait till they come to Vegas and we see the East and West shootout where it, that's probably one of my favorite races to watch. I, I always kind of put some money on what teammates going to be who, but this year we have such, you know, com- top competitive teammates and, um, you know, they're really, really similar paces. So it's going to be really cool to see which, which coast is dominant. But um, I have to say, I think the West Coast is. I think the West Coast has some of uh, the faster guys out there on the team. So uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I, I think, gosh, I mean, Marvin's been so, so good on, uh, True, on the yeah, East side yeah, of things this year. Definitely. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I agree with you. I think that's the one of any year, you know, Vegas where, where the two fifties almost, uh, you know, overshadow the four fifties because oh, you never definitely. know what's going to happen when you, when you, you know, mash up the East and the West coast. And I think, uh, it's bragging rights. I mean, these guys want to say, Hey, yeah. you know, we're, I'm number one and you know, it's, you know, you got a couple of champions mixed in and, uh, I think anything can happen and it makes it kind of exciting for the fans. Definitely. And, you know, the number one rule um, when you're on a race team is always be faster than your teammate. You know, that's just the way to kind of secure your spot on the team. And, um, you know, they're, they may be friends, but they're also competitors. You know, they're teammates, but they're competitors. So um, I think the rivalry between the teams and the kind of the competition between the teammates is um, really their unique aspect, obviously, of the East-West shootout. I don't really care which champion of each coast wins. I'm more concerned on, you know, which teammate is after teammate. It's actually really cool to see because, you know, most of them train together and um, some of them live together. And, you know, a lot of them are really good friends and a lot of them are not as good friends. So it's really cool to see that, um, you know, relationship transpire on the track. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, you know, you kind of kind of let us into talking a little bit about motocross. I mean, what what kind of change do these guys have to make in 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 preparation from, you know, obviously bikes are completely different, but you know, from a personal standpoint, I mean, you know, what is there a, a, a switch they need to flip internally, you know, to to go from supercross to motocross or is it pretty a, a pretty seamless transition? It's all about endurance. Outdoors is just a battle of the fittest. You're racing in 100-plus degree weather, 30-minute motos, and, you know, it's outdoors is gnarly, gnarly on your body. And I just think their training kind of kicks up a notch. And, um, you know, you really have to be extremely physically fit to prevail in outdoors. Outdoors is such a long season and um, long motos. So um, I just think the training kind of kicks up a gear. And it's uh, it's survival of the fittest for outdoors for sure. It's, it's such a different style of racing too i mean um you see a lot of the the stronger ride prevail and um yeah, outdoors is pretty cool it, it's you can be a great supercross rider and you can be a terrible outdoor rider so um a lot of people who are strong in supercross are not as strong in outdoor so um it's cool that a lot of the top guys in supercross you know the whole the whole um lineup changes and you see a completely different um you know, champion outdoors than you do indoors. So I, I just, I like outdoors. It's totally new. I don't even know, you don't even know what to expect come the first round in Hangtown. It's it's definitely surprising. So um, you really get to see who's the strongest one of them all. Yeah, for sure. Well, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to call in. I know, uh, you know, we ran a little late with Ryan Beat there, but I uh, appreciate you still uh, making the call in and, uh, and uh, oh, looking, yeah, looking forward to to next week, and uh, you know, and and we'll get you back on and and talk some more some more racing. Sounds good to me, and I can't wait to start talking outdoors. I think outdoors is going to be really cool, and hopefully, I can get to a couple more of your races as well. So, uh, thanks for having me again, and we will talk soon. All right, thanks a lot, Amy. Take it easy. Bye. Have Bye. Fun. Take it easy. All right, that was Amy Hood, uh, resident uh, two-wheel expert here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And, uh, yeah, it was cool having her out at Desert Race, kind of getting her, uh, getting her, uh, you know, you know, kind of exposing her to something uh, a little bit new. And, uh, um, yeah, we're definitely, uh, you know, stoked to have her out there and uh, hope, to, hope to do it again sometime soon. But uh, right now we're kind of wrapping things up here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. And those were your... Uh, uh, KMC Supercross, uh, you know, your KMC Wheels Supercross coverage right now. We're going to kind of 
flip to uh, some full uh, coverage of Supercross, though, we, with the results. Obviously, uh, Tomac taking the win. We had Dungy, Seeley, Reed, and Davey Millsaps uh, rounding out your top five in the 450s, moving over to 250s here in Detroit. It was Bogle, Muskeen, Savachi, Martin, and Anthony Rodriguez with the top uh, five. And then looking at the point standings right now, it's uh, Dungy, Kennard, Tomac, Seeley, and Reed as your top five in the 450s. And then in the 250 East standings, as we sit, it is all Marvin Muskeen up front. We got Bogle followed by Jeremy Martin, Savachi, and RJ Hampshire. Three rounds to go. We got St. Louis, New Jersey, Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, looking uh, looking at the West Coast, uh, got a couple of rounds left there as well. And it all culminates in Las Vegas in May. It's about a month and a half left to Supercross. And uh, I got to tell you, it has been an exciting season. Lots of leader changes. And uh, right now it's all Dungy and Muskeen, though, at the front. But uh, big thanks to KMC Wheels for sponsoring that Supercross coverage, as well as our KMC Wheels Fantasy Supercross League. Been a great r- week of racing, and uh, this weekend, don't forget World Rally Championship kicking off. We got Stadium Super Truck or S- Stadium Super Trucks, as well as Supercross on tap, and uh, even further out than that. We've got uh, Baja Sur, the score race. We've got more stadium super trucks, torque kickoff, more Lucas Oil, Formula Drift kickoff, Enduro Cross, Supercross, and uh, even further out, GRC, that big kickoff for Global Rallycross. Got to give a big shout out to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Rigid Industries, Dirtfish Rally School, UPR.com, Blue Water Resort and Casino, JMR Performance Brakes, KMC Wheels, Parker Motor Company, MTX Audio. Give a shout out to Steve Arpin, Ryan Beat. Amy Hood, and uh, thanks for listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Give us a follow at Jim Beaver 15 on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook.com slash Down and Dirty Show. And uh, all the back episodes can be found at downanddirtyshow.com or download our app available on Apple, iTunes, Google Play, and the Amazon Kindle Store. It's all available right now at the download of a button or at the touch of a button. So uh, thanks to all of you for listening in each and every week. We will be back with some more interviews, and we're working on a blockbuster one for next week. Hopefully I can uh, bring you in the loop on that today or tomorrow. But uh, thanks for staying tuned to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. We'll see you next Monday. As always, game on.